In this video, I'm going to show you how to composite Earth Studio projects in Blender. For most of my projects, I use Adobe After Effects. However, the cost can be quite prohibitive for many. At over $250 per year, and even more for the entire creative suite, the Adobe products might not be for you. Luckily, there's a compositing tool built right into Blender that we can use. Blender is a free 3D and imaging software suite with great community support. While I still prefer using Adobe After Effects, you can still get great results out of Blender. So let's begin using the project that we created in part one. We'll also be using the additional elements that we added in part two, which were the markers. In this video, I'll show you how to use the masking in the composite and how to separate objects onto separate layers. The compositing tool is accessible by the compositing tab. By default, when you come to this page, it's usually blank. You want to make sure that you select the Use Nodes checkbox to display the nodes for the compositing. The standard configuration is the render layer, which includes the objects within your project. This is connected to the composite node, which is the output for your render. We'll do a sample render image to see which objects are rendered. As you can see here, it's rendering most of the objects that we have in our project. The background image is not included because it is not an object. We can also hide objects by deselecting the collection or altering their visibility. So let's jump back over to the compositing tab and we'll configure our render. First thing I'm going to do is just disconnect it from the composite. So now we just have our render layer node. Then I'm going to press Shift A on the keyboard and select Movie Clip. I'll zoom in on this and we'll select the movie clip that we have as our background. I'm moving around the node area using the middle key on my mouse and dragging. Then I'm going to click on the movie clip and then press Shift D to make a duplicate. I'll then click on the folder icon to load the footage with the mask that we generated from Google Earth Studio. With these two sets of images, we'll be able to create a difference key, which will allow us to mask out objects when they go behind structures. So then again, pressing Shift A on the keyboard, we're going to go to the matte section and then select difference key. We'll then drag our difference key node between the two movie clips. We'll then drag the image output from each movie clip to image one and image two of the difference key. The difference key has two settings, tolerance and fall off. We'll make adjustments to these later. For the time being, let's see what this looks like. We'll drag the image from the difference key to the input of the composite. We'll then jump over to the render tab and give this a test render. The result is the difference between the two images, which is basically showing the mask that we created in Google Earth Studio. Now jumping back to the compositing, we want to be able to replace this mask with our rendered objects. To make things a little bit easier, we're going to add in another output node called the viewer. This will allow us to see in real time the changes we make to the compositing. The viewer displays behind the nodes. To control the zoom of the viewer image, you can zoom in by pressing Alt-V or zoom out using V. To move the image around, you can press Alt on your keyboard while pressing the middle button on your mouse and drag. So now we're going to replace the mask with the objects from our project. Pressing Shift-A, we're going to go to Converter and then select Set Alpha. We'll then drag it between the difference key and the viewer. We'll replace the mat to the alpha. Then from our render layers, we're going to drag image to image of the set alpha. We can now see in the background that the mask has been replaced with our objects. We'll now reconnect the image to our composite image output and do a test render. And as you can see, our results are the objects with the masking. So obviously this is not our desired result yet. So we're going to put the background into the image as well. So we're just gonna make a copy of our original movie clip. So we'll select the movie clip and then press Shift D to make a duplicate and we'll drag it up here. Then pressing Shift A again on the keyboard, we're gonna select color and then alpha over. And we'll place this node just to the right here. We'll then take the image from our set alpha node and we'll drag it into the bottom image position of the alpha over. 
We'll then take our movie clip image and place it over top. We'll then drag our alpha over output image to the composite image input, and we'll do a test render. And you can see now the objects are overlaid on the background image. We are, however, missing the place markers and the quality of the masking can be improved. Since the place markers don't interact with the mask that we created, we need to separate them onto a separate layer that we can overlay over the final image. To do this, we're going to use the render layers function within Blender. This creates separate rendered layers, allowing us to separate the objects into different layers. At the top right of the screen, next to the text view layer, we're going to create a new layer. We'll rename this layer marker layer. We want this layer to contain just the markers. When the layer is created, we're going to deselect all the objects we do not want to appear in the marker layer. These three objects here at the bottom are either empties or invisible objects, so I'm not going to worry about them. Then I'm going to switch back to the view layer, which is the default layer, and I'm going to deselect the GES markers. This will exclude the GES markers collection from the default render. Switching back over to the compositing tab, we'll press Shift A, then input, and then select render layers. In this render layer, we're going to select the option of marker layer. We'll then create another alpha over by duplicating the one currently on the screen. We'll then drag the image from the original alpha over and then the new markers layer into the two inputs and drag that to the composite. We'll now go over to the rendering and uh, do a test render again. And we can see now that we have now added the place markers to the image. Now let's clean up this mask a little bit. So back into the compositing tab, we're going to make some adjustments to the difference key. And we'll do a quick uh, test render here just to see if made any uh, change. Actually, what we'll do is we'll uh, put the uh, output into our viewer in the background so we can see this uh, adjustment in real time. Let's do a quick render to align our images. And then we can zoom in using the Alt-V on our keyboard. So we've got our tolerance set at uh, 0.01 and we have our fall off set to 0.01. We'll just scrub through the image and make sure that the mask is consistent throughout. And it looks like we've got a bit of bleed through here. So I'm going to make uh, another adjustment to the fall off to 0.001. And we can see that it is cutting out properly there without any bleed through. So I'll just do a quick review of the animation and uh, check a number of parts where might be some problems and uh, things are looking okay there. Everything seems to be clipping out correctly. So I think we got the right settings. So I'll just go through a quick explanation of the node setup for the compositing. We've got the two movie clips. These are the two sets of images that we received from Google Earth Studio, one with the mask that we created using a KML. We then have our render layer, which is our objects that are gonna go into the mask, our difference key to create the mask, and then our set alpha to combine the rendered layers, which are our objects, with the masking. We then will combine our object and mask with the background image. Just going to click on the convert pre-multiplied here, it gives us a bit of a stronger image. Then with our rendered layer, we also have the marker layer, which we can see here um, is on its own separate layer, so we can overlay it. So it's the only item within that particular layer. Back to the compositing. The marker layer then combines with our image that was created with the masking and the background. Again, we'll click on convert pre-multiplied. And then the result of that goes to our composite. So we'll do another uh, quick render here just to make sure everything looks good. And uh, we will now set it up to create the video file. First thing we want to do is uh, change our color management to uh, standard. Uh, again, this just adds a little bit more depth and uh, true to the colors that were created from Google Earth Studio. Then we're going to select where we want to save our file. So I'll just uh, select uh, an item here on my hard drive and I'll give it a name, Valencia. 
and we'll click on accept. We'll then change our file format to the FFmpeg video. We'll then uh, expand encoding. We'll change the uh, container to an MPEG-4 and the video codec will keep at uh, H.264. We'll change our quality to high quality. We'll keep everything else the same. We'll then uh, go to render and render the animation. This rendering may look a little bit different than normal as it's actually rendering three different layers and then combining it. Uh, not to worry, the end result will be combined images. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to uh, like this video, and if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.